Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Girl Space Program 1.11. I'm not usually in 1.11 but this happens to be where I test out my aircraft and I haven't made aircraft in a long time but I'm planning to make a whole bunch of them and the first one is one that's been hanging out in my sort of blender folder for ages now that I just haven't finished and that is the Saab Draken. It was requested by a viewer and I modeled it during a live stream but I just never finished it with the textures and everything until now and so uh, here it is and it is an interesting plane it's a very interesting shape and so that's why I was uh, agreed to do it that's why I agreed to do it uh, but I haven't made the landing gear of course those are just a stock landing gear resized to an appropriate size I did not do the control surfaces. I actually modeled them, but I didn't want to import them because importing control surfaces is a sort of a pain. Uh, so I just use uh, B9 procedural control surfaces for now. And I have uh, not made the jet. I actually tried to build in the jet engine into the body, but that did not work so well. So I've decided to just rely on the Avon that comes with advanced jet engines. It did have uh, adapted Avon. Uh, I think it was a Mark 302 or something like that. It was very close to this version, so uh, it was renamed though. It had a different name. Anyway, so we have basically the right engine uh, regardless, and we are going to flight test it. Uh, a lot of my work has been tweaking the numbers, and so I've actually flight tested it many, many times, and I think now I've got the numbers well enough. Um, the wings have the actual Ferrum Aerospace Research uh, sort of configuration, but the vertical stabilizer does not because whenever I put it on the vertical stabilizer, it wants to veer to the right. So we we just have the stock uh, lifting surface module on there. So, but otherwise, most of our lifting surfaces are okay with farm. Uh, you might note that I've got the mass strength multiplier here. Uh, to 0.95 that gives the wing mass what I think it ought to have especially considering its general heft with the air intakes Involved the air intakes are built into the wings. There's only four parts here. There's the uh, uh, four parts that I made in here uh, the body the two wing pieces and the vertical stabilizer so uh, these I figured were pretty heavy and that's what we've got here. The mass strength multiplier is actually based on what you tell fair mirror space is the size of the wing and so if I tell it it's bigger, uh, the mass will be bigger. It automatically calculates the mass based on that. So we have as much fuel as I could fit into the wing without going over the listed uh, gross weight of the plane. That's not the maximum takeoff weight. It's uh, maximum takeoff weight is 11.9 tons. So we're not there yet. We could carry a payload or something like that or external fuel tanks. The empty weight should be correct if we dump all this kerosene. And there we have, well, it's a little bit light, actually. It's supposed to be uh, 7.865 tons, and we're at 7.737 tons. So I suppose I made the, I can make the landing gear a little bit bigger or something <laughs> to compensate. Uh, that's, uh, it's just a matter of the amount of room I left for the landing gear. Now, I won't release this just yet because I'm going to release it with a whole bunch of other planes in a package, so for convenience, and I'll introduce those shortly. Uh, so we should be at the right empty weight, that's the center mass and center lift you can see there, and the gear position in relation to those. And let's take it outside and see how it goes. This install has a lot of airplane specific sort of things, that's why you might have noticed the armor thickness and hit points and all that business, that's uh, BD armory stuff. And uh, right now that's not functional I don't think. Uh, but we'll keep far up, uh, let me stop sliding back here by starting the engine. And we're using atmospheric autopilot. So yeah, this install has all the stuff for airplanes. Now the liftoff speed with this has got to be a bit high. And that's just a far thing. I think it has to also do with the wing drag. So you can see I'm pulling up, but it, whoa, 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 it sort of rocks a little. Uh, okay, it's not doing well. <laughs> okay, I thought I fixed it, but anyway, it's like 120 meters per second, which is way high. And I wasn't using full throttle there. 
there's no gimbling on this engine or anything. I don't know, maybe it was the landing gear that uh, was causing the little rocking or something. Anyway, we are going to go up and break the sound barrier and do those sorts of things. I've tried my best on the texturing. The reason I'm doing airplanes, and I'm going to have the F100, F101, F102, uh, F104, F105, F106. Those are planned for the little package. I've already got the SR71 and the AN225. I would like to also have the pregnant guppy, the super guppy, and... Uh, I think the B-58 Hustler. I'm mostly interested in planes from the 50s and 60s uh, that have been sort of neglected. So that's what I'm aiming for. Right now the space taken up for this plane is just 5 megabytes. So it's not bad. I mean not including the parts that I didn't make of course. It, it's not quite the sort of Lego way that KSP works but uh, I'm also going to be doing other stuff with them so. I have ulterior motives. I just have the Mark 1 cockpit for now, but I also do want to make a legit cockpit for this. I think uh, with ASAP props or... I think there's a Mark 1 revamp thing for raster prop monitor that I could use. But right now it's just the normal one. Well, we want to go higher before breaking the sound barrier. And I'll sort of turn to the right here first before we level out. Wikipedia said that this had a pretty significant climb rate, a rate of climb 199 meters per second. We didn't quite get that, but we haven't been at full throttle either. Okay, so here we go. I have not landed this at all. During the flight testing, I was mostly concerned with the takeoff speed and whether I could take off at all, especially when we had the FAR module on the vertical stabilizer and that did not work. Now, uh, we sort of passed the sound barrier a little bit too easily, uh, but then we got off the runway a little bit too hard, so it's we sort of... It depends. Pick your poison, I suppose. But this should be able to get to Mach 2 in theory, maximum speed Mach 2 at least. I'll be satisfied if we just get to a significant proportion of that. We are using a lot of pitch authority here though. It's a tough balance. I don't know what will make Far happy. I've told Far the correct dimensions of the wings. I at one point tried incorrect dimensions of the wings making them larger. That did not help this sort of pitch situation or getting off the runway in particular. So in fact it hurt getting off the runway to tell it that the wing was bigger meaning that the wing was causing more drag than was useful apparently. Mach 1.6 Mach 1.7 Sort of creeping up to Mach 1.8. I don't think I'm gonna go too much faster than that. And we've lost sight of Cape Canaveral, so I'd like to perhaps we'll get to Mach 1.8 and call it. It's certainly not gonna find it easy to pass Mach 2, so performance wise, it's not too bad as far as being a match. So Mach 1.8. It's just really a matter of getting off the runway that's a problem. Okay. Well, we are going to head back home. We've still got more than half of our fuel. We have about an hour's worth at the start. Well, we better slow down. We've got high dynamic pressure here. You can see lots of stuff going on with the wings. Well, we're back at the coast, but I still can't see Cape Canaveral. Okay, I think I see the Cape now. It's interesting how quickly it dumps speed when I go below a certain throttle, though.
like right there. Look how quickly it decelerates. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, so I can accelerate here and sort of hold it right there, but then when I throttle down, look at the g-force meter. It goes to like six g's just decelerating there. Can you believe that? I mean, that's not exactly how planes work. It shouldn't be getting this much drag, is basically what I'm saying. And that's probably hurt us a lot along the way. The amount of drag being applied to this is quite stunning. <laughs> but, I mean, at least it does what it's supposed to do, but I'm wondering about that drag that basically stops this dead in its tracks when we go from two-thirds throttle to one-thirds throttle. That doesn't seem right. Well, let's take it from Valentina's view, I suppose. I'll... Wow, that's a little bit slow considering our takeoff velocity. We better go a little bit faster than that. I'll hide the other things for now. But there's not a whole lot of middle ground in our throttle. <laughs> you can see how much it slows down. Yeah, it's tough to hit a nice speed with this right now. It's basically like acting like it's on or off. I don't know, that might be down to the config of this Avon engine. Trying to maintain my speed considering our liftoff velocity here. Oh, it's it's tough to pull up right now too. Oh, oh. And cut. Okay. <laughs> look how uh, look how quickly it's like I caught an arrestor wire or something. Okay, well, very suspicious sort of. But, all right. We are back. Valentina made it. And there's the Saab Uh I will preview some other planes first and then I'll package them all for convenience instead of trying to distribute one at a time. And then, yeah, hopefully it'll be of use to people. We'll see. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.